Thank you guys very much. How are you guys doing today? You all uh, big whiskey fans? Yeah. Awesome, very cool. Well, we've got one of the best guys I know in the industry, period, uh, Mr. Ian Chang. Um, so he is the master blender of Cavalan whiskey as well as the distillery manager. So one thing that drew me to Cavalan was, well, one, the quality, but two, the climate in Taiwan, which allows you to produce whiskey much differently than you would traditionally. But also, being at Google, I think this is probably the most fitting, um, it is the most technologically advanced distillery in the world. So I think that's a really cool point to speak about, given that we're here. So, um, Ian, how are things going with you? Uh, things are doing well, yes. Good, Taiwan. good, yeah. <laughs> you've been uh, busy, you've been very busy. Uh, so far, yes. So, so you are here mm -hmm. from Taiwan for Whiskey Fest? Uh, that's right, and also next week we're going to DC for uh, Whiskey Fest DC as well. Very cool. And wow. after that I go back to Taiwan. You're not ready for the next trip, which is uh, Spain. Really? Yes, yes. Big market right. for you? Uh, no, Spain is uh, mainly to uh, visit our uh, sherry car supplier. As you know, um, within the uh, Carvalan portfolio, uh, we have, uh, I, I would say, the most comprehensive uh, sherry yes. portfolio in, in the whiskey industry, uh, right from Fino sherry cask, uh, Manzanilla, uh, Montiado, and so on. Yes. So every year, uh, I actually go to Spain twice a year to, to inspect the, uh, the quality of our cask, okay. see if they are ready or not for the maturation of our whiskey. So that is something that I'm really looking forward to because as you know, in Spain, the weather is very good. It's fantastic. And the food is good as well. So. Food is very good, yes, <laughs> yes. Spain is one of my yes, favorite yes. places to mm, be. Yeah. But um, tell me about mm. how, how this came about, Cavalan right. in general. So uh, as uh, George mentioned just now, uh, Cavalan started in 2005. Um, at that time, uh, we were the one and only whiskey distillery. So like our Japanese neighbor, uh, where they have uh, Santori, mm -hmm. which started the uh, Japanese whiskey industry uh, back in 1923, uh, Kavlan actually started the uh, Taiwanese whiskey industry, but you know, as late as 2006. But the reason for that, uh, it was actually quite simple because uh, any time before 2002, uh, we couldn't have any private wineries, distilleries, or breweries. Really? Because of the uh, monopoly system that we used to have in Taiwan. So only our government at that time could uh, produce, import, and also sell anything alcoholic. Oh. So Mr. Lee Sr., who is uh, about 80 years old this year, uh, he was really frustrated when he was a young man uh, 40 years ago when he wanted to set up his own distillery, but he couldn't do so. Mm -hmm. And that's why we waited for almost 30 years. Uh, in 2002, finally, the whole regulation was uh, changed due to WTO. Because uh, once you join WTO, you, are, you have to uh, embrace uh, fair competition. And also, you have to open yourself up to, you know, to the whole world. Yes. So that's why <clears throat> when Mr. Lee was uh, really chuffed. So he uh, quickly set up a small team of uh, engineers, uh, food technologists, uh, even architects, because uh, he has to design the, sh the, uh, the, the shape of our distillery. Yes. Yeah. So we even came to uh, US, Canada, uh, Japan, Canada, uh, Scotland, and also Ireland to gather information and also to see how to set up a distillery of our own in Taiwan. So between 2002 and also 2005, uh, that was the what we call the intelligence gathering phase <laughs> of, uh, of the uh, setting up of the distillery. So finally in April uh, 2005, we started the construction. And guess what? It took us only nine months to build the whole distillery, which I, I was told that uh, it was a, a record. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think yes, it's a record right. for a lot of things. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, as Mr. Lee Sr. always describes, it's like having a baby born in nine month time. <laughs> so that's his baby. It is his baby, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So ever since then, uh, we've been producing whiskey 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three, six, five days a year, nonstop until today. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of the distillery, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I went over there, I learned a lot right. of things. And, and one thing mm -hmm. I learned was that the second most popular distillery in the world in Scotland has about 150,000 mm -hmm. visitors per year. Mm -hmm. You guys have a million visitors a year? Approximately, yes. That's You're right. number one by a long shot. But also, in a way, that shows you how alcoholic we are <laughs> <laughs> in Taiwan. Okay, that's true, that's true. Because uh, among the uh, one million visitors, 80% domestic, 20% uh, foreign. 80% um, domestic? That's right, wow. that's right. You know, our domestic consumers, they, uh, when they don't have anywhere else to go, <laughs> they come to our distillery. <laughs> Oh my God! So then, with with the products that you were creating, right. how did you get into whiskey making? So uh, it was actually by um, I would say by fate, okay. uh, because uh, in two thousand and four, uh, no, sorry, I should say early two thousand five. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, uh, my father he was uh, really ill, so my mom um, asked me to come home and to look after the family. And where, also, where were you at the time? I was uh, actually uh, doing small businesses uh, in, in China. Okay. So I came back to Taiwan. Uh, we finished all, everything in China. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't know what to do. I was actually really you know, panicking. Uh, so every day, uh, I, would, I remember from January to, uh, to April, every day I was uh, searching on the internet through Google as well, <laughs> looking for a job. Um, and uh, in Taiwan, we have this uh, so-called 104 website, which is uh, the place, you know, the website you go to look for job vacancies. So one day I saw, it was three o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep, and I saw that King Car Company, which is uh, the, the group that is behind Kavlan, they were looking for someone to be uh, a spirit researcher so it wasn't called a blender yet. Uh, so I sent my CV, and uh, three weeks later, a gentleman whose name is uh, Peter, he's the uh, special assistant to our chairman, Mr. Lee. He called me and he said, uh, are you still looking for a job? I said, yes, I'm you know, desperate for a job. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, uh, you know, come, to, uh, come to our headquarter and uh, do an interview and see how it goes. So the next day I went and uh, the very first question he asked me was uh, if I had any previous experience in the whiskey industry or in the alcoholic beverage industry. And as you can tell, I'm a very honest person and the answer was no, so I said no. Uh, and I thought that was the end of the conversation. But then I did emphasize to him that for the eight years studying in the UK as a student, I was drinking almost every night. <laughs> and, and that should count as very much, you know, being part of the industry as well. So, <laughs> so he said that, uh, why don't you take a test on your nose to see if you can uh, differentiate all these uh, flavors. As you know that when we drink whiskey, I would say the most, uh, Nate would agree with me, the most uh, fascinating and also interesting thing about whiskey is that uh, every distillery has its own uh, unique uh, flavors, uh, qualities, and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, in front of me, I had 15 uh, the so-called the, the whiskey notes that you can expect from, uh, from single malt whiskey. And the rule was very simple. I could only nose, it, nose them once, and then you have to write down the uh, descriptors. Mm -hmm. So apparently, I, uh, I was very lucky that I, uh, I, I had the highest score. But also, it was then I knew that my nose actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I could uh, differentiate all these uh, different uh, flavors right, from right. whiskeys. And uh, once I joined the company, uh, I was really lucky once again that, uh, very fortunate, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, he sent me to Scotland for two years uh, to study with the uh, world famous uh, whiskey expert of uh, Dr. Jim Swan. Jim Swan. Uh, so <clears throat> for two years, that was, uh, he was the person who taught me everything about whiskey and life in general as well. So he's my Mr. Miyagi in a way, yes. and uh, I'm the whiskey kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's yes, an amazing yes. story because I know now mm. that, I mean, I don't want to say the number, but how, mm. how many 
whiskeys do you taste per day now? So on a, on a daily basis, uh, if I'm not traveling, uh, which is very difficult these days, yes. because uh, I always say to um, our audience and consumer that these days I'm more into the in, into the uh, showbiz. <laughs> you know, being a brand ambassador, uh, uh, going around the world yeah, to course. whole tasting. But whenever I go back to Taiwan uh, on a daily basis, I have to know samples in a range of uh, between 200 to 400. Per day? On a daily basis, yes. <laughs> because I have to catch up with my, uh, you know, when I'm not there, uh, because the production doesn't stop. No. So course, every day we have uh, new batches of the uh, new make, mm -hmm. and also you have uh, matured products in the uh, in the cast. Yes. All waiting to be uh, nosed, uh, to wow. be determined, uh, you know, whether they are matured or not, or if we need to do something differently. For example, yes. uh, transferring uh, from refill cask to uh to say port cars yes and so on so okay. it's uh it's it's very interesting mm -hmm. uh even though i have so many samples to know but i never get tired it's uh i would say it's the, the best job in the world absolutely the best job in the world if you like to drink if you like to drink <laughs> yes yes and and so yes. is cavalan mm -hmm. producing any other products other than whiskey yes uh last year 2018 uh in november uh we launched our latest gin Wow, so congratulations. this is our gin number one. And this year, we are working on gin number two. So in the future, uh, Nate, as we talked about just now, uh, before the, the, uh, the, the, the talk, uh, in the future, I think uh, in addition to whiskey, Kavlan, we also do gin and also some other alcoholic beverages as oh, well. Wow. So these are all the surprises that we have. Uh, for our consumers fantastic you know, for the future. Well, I know that the Distillery Select mm -hmm. is new to the American market. What was right. the purpose of creating Distillery Select? Right. So the Distillery Select, which is the one here, uh, this was also launched last year, similar time to our gin. Okay. This was, uh, I would say this is the, uh, the, the brand new entry level for any consumers who wants to either try whiskey in general mm -hmm. for the first time mm -hmm. or try Kavlan for the first time. Because uh, in the past, uh, Kavlan has always been described as uh, quality only and no quantity. Because right. uh, they, consumers always say that Kavlan is, uh, is a bit pricey. Uh, but Mr. Lee knows that uh, quality is actually you know, the, uh, our number one uh, priority. Absolutely. So, but in order to have a, a, a volume maker for Kavlan, you know, for quantity, uh, we need to do something differently yes. in order to, uh, to bring down the cost so that uh, the, the, the final uh, end price mm -hmm. for our consumers can be competitive. For example, here uh, in, in Chicago at Binnie's, yes, I saw this one on the shelf for $49.99, which is, I think, a very competitive price. Reasonable price, price point, yes. And even though the price is uh, competitive, we don't compromise anything on, on the quality. quality yeah, absolutely. So what we do is um, by using refill casks, uh, which, which are casks that have been used repeatedly for many years. Some can be as old as, old as uh, 40 to 60 years old. But the thing is, uh, once again, because of the, uh, the location of Taiwan, which is uh, subtropical, uh, in our very hot summertime, mm -hmm. we, uh, the heat actually managed to, uh, to push more wood-related flavors and also colors into the, the whiskey. whiskey yeah. So later, after the talk, uh, we have the so-called happy hour. Uh, feel free to try the uh, Kavlan Distillery Select. When you look at the color, you'll be amazed and you won't you know, think that it is a, a single malt whiskey matured in very old reveal cask. Wow. And that is all to do with the uh, combination of quality new make uh, and the heat of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the heat of Taiwan. I mean, India yeah. is producing a lot too yes, right yes, now. Yes, it's, that's it's, right. The climate that's is such right. a unique climate to be producing yeah. in. Um, right. So how did you go from, mm -hmm. you know, essentially zero bottles in 2005 mm -hmm. to 500,000 bottles annually? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're at right now? Uh, 500,000 is actually the old number now. Wow. So we now do uh, nearly 1 million bottles. One million a year. year. Wow. Year. But okay. we still have a long way to go. Yes. But um, I would say uh, 
two very unique uh, qualities of Kaplan is that uh, on the nose, mm -hmm. uh, Kaplan offers you that very uh, refreshing and also very clean, fruity, floral characters. Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the palate, Kaplan offers you that nice natural sweetness, mm -hmm. but also the creamy and oily character on, on the palate mm -hmm. when, you, when you drink the whiskey. So Absolutely that makes that. The, uh, the whole experience really enjoyable. Yes, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I, I agree because uh, as a judge in the spirits competition mm -hmm. recently, right. we tasted through 150 spirits on the Friday yes. and the Saturday, right. and then the top 83 spirits on yes. the Sunday, mm -hmm. and we came out with a $30 bourbon as the world winner of right. the best whiskey, right? Yes, and so that's right. it mm -hmm. beat out, I think, 300 other whiskeys mm -hmm. overall. And you think to yourself that, you know, you, you think you know whiskey or you think you know wine and mm -hmm. you do a blind taste and the $30 bottle comes out. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to have your quality mm -hmm. in your high end, but right. also right. quality in a, exactly. in a lower end price point That's that right. allows people mm -hmm. to get familiar with the brand and then yes. move their yes. category and their That's palate right. up to a higher mm -hmm. place. Um, what would you say the favorite of yours is that you have produced? Um, within our portfolio, um, every one of them. I mean, that's cheating. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it all depends on um, occasions, and also depends on uh, um, the mood that you are mm -hmm. in. Uh, for example, the uh, the one in the middle here, this is our Kavlan Classic. I think this is uh, a, a very good uh, everyday drinking whiskey. This is something that I have in a decanter in my office. Wow. Whenever I go back to the office uh, uh, to prepare for the next um, thing to do mm -hmm. uh, whenever I have a break, I always have a, a small drum of the uh, classic. Wow. But then if you like something that is um, all about complexity, um, harmony, just like uh, another brand called the H something, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is our answer to that. I see. So uh, even though this one is uh, a single malt whiskey, but when you, when you uh, when you when you drink it, you won't realize that this is a single malt whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, you think that it is a blend because it is so complex with so Very many layers of uh, flavors. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in the in the in the method of uh, blending this particular expression, we have used uh, certain types of casks to mimic the effect of grain whiskey. Right, and then combined with other types of cask, it's like grain and malt mm -hmm. blended together, which is just like a blend whiskey. So this is something uh, for, for our consumers to try if they want complexity uh, and also heavier weight in terms of body right. of the whiskey. Right. Mm -hmm. So oddly enough, uh, I first learned about Cavalan here mm -hmm. in Chicago. Uh, I mm -hmm. went to Benny's and I saw this beautiful setup and I thought, you know, what is that? And, and so. You see Cavalan now everywhere, mm -hmm. but um, one of the things that is interesting that's been a common misconception is mm -hmm. um, the Solist line. Right. So the Solist line is, is sort of the higher end range mm -hmm. of the casks that they have at Cavalan. But um, one thing you've noticed is that in America, none of the bottles say mm -hmm. Solist on it, right. yet it is the identical bottle without exactly. the writing. So maybe you can clear this up. Yes. So. Uh, in addition to these three that we see here, we have also another series, uh, which is called the, the Solis series. And what the Solis series is about is that uh, they are all cast strength. Uh, because uh, in Taiwan, we have uh, many consumers. I would say the majority of our consumers, they like to have their whiskey at cast strength. Uh, can you believe it? You know, straight <laughs> straight from the cask. So normally the uh, the is that alcohol, just Taiwanese or is that everybody in general? <laughs> uh, Taiwanese and also certain parts in Europe as well. Interesting. Okay. Yes, um, we have a saying in Taiwan: uh, there's no such thing as a strong alcohol, only weaker man. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going to put that on a, <laughs> on a notepad and put that up no, and look no. at it every day. So they, they like to drink uh, car string. And uh, so it's, it's all about you know, uh, strength in the range of uh, 53 to some even as high as 59. Mm -hmm. So when we entered into the US uh, five or six years ago, um, we also want to enter you know, the Soli series yes. into the US. But unfortunately, we were told that uh, there has been another company 
they have already registered the name Solist okay. here in the U.S. Okay. So that's that's why it's a pity that we cannot use the word Solist. But Understood. if you go to um, you know, professional wine and liquor stores like Binnie's yeah. and any other ones. Total Wine. Uh, that's right, Total yeah. Wine and so on. If you ask them uh, for Solist, uh, we do have them here in the U.S. You do? It's okay. just that they are not called Solist. Good. They are called, uh, for example, ex-bourbon cast strength okay. or vino barrique cast strength and so on. Okay, that's Got right. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm from Canada mm -hmm. and in Canada we have the Solist. Right. So, I, you know, I saw it mm -hmm. here and I thought, okay, well, that's the yes, same yes. thing. It has to be. Yeah. And then I would look mm -hmm. at the labels and they would have the same mm -hmm. or if not higher alcoholic content. Yes, and you yes, know that it's, right. it's going to be cask strength. It's mm -hmm. going to be from the Solist line. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's next for Cavalan in mm -hmm. terms of what you guys are producing? So the next for Kavlan, uh, as mentioned just now, we will produce also gins. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, for the future, I think beer is another product really? that we will produce. Yes. Wow. But it's not called Kavlan. It's called something else. Uh, it's called Baskin, Baskin beer. Uh, so um, I think King Car Company, once again, the company behind Kavlan, uh, we are thinking of... Uh, moving forward into the future with more and more alcoholic uh, beverages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a bit similar to uh, Santori in Japan. Right. So in addition to our non-alcoholic food and beverage, I think Mr. Lee, he wants to go into the uh, alcoholic beverage industry. Um, that, that's, uh, I think, our long-term interesting, interesting. Uh, goal. Mm -hmm. So what is the reason that you guys have never produced an age statement whiskey? Yes, this is, uh, this is a very uh, good question. You know, we have consumers asking us every day, uh, are we going to produce whiskey with age statement in the future? Um, <clears throat> at this stage, I would say no. Okay. But having known Mr. Lee so well, he's very unpredictable. <laughs> so you never know in the future mm -hmm. if we would do it or not. But the thing is, uh, personally, I think it's not really necessary to do so. Uh, once again, if you look at the... Um, the hot climate of Taiwan, uh, which is subtropical. Uh, if you come to Taiwan in our summertime, between May and October each year, uh, it is normally 38 degrees Celsius, which I would say 90 Fahrenheit, right. something like that. So our evaporation is actually quite high. As you can imagine, if you store your new make in a cask for say 15 or 20 years yes. with eight to 10% evaporation each year, by the end of 20 years time, you don't get much left. Mm -hmm. uh, all you get left is something that is uh, very woody and also out of balance uh, in terms of fruitiness, floral and so on. Because when you drink whiskey, you want the whole package, you know, with the, uh, the, the fullest flavor and complexity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But by the end of 20 years, with so much evaporating into thin air, I think we don't have much left and also you lose the balance. Yes. yes. So unless we can do it in a different way, mm -hmm. but I think we cannot really make, uh, produce whiskey with age statement. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems mm -hmm. to be working for you without the age statement. So. Because uh, having said all these, uh, it's not really necessary either because uh, when, you, when you try our whiskey later, uh, like Nate, you have already tried our whiskey for you know within the, the whole portfolio. A lot of your whiskeys, yes. You, you know that you notice that even though our whiskeys uh, they are matured for short period of time, but the maturity, mm -hmm. the uh, the complexity, they're all there for you to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Normally, I usually uh, use one example to, uh, to to describe this. You know, when you go to Taiwan uh, from north to south. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 400 kilometers. And before we had the high-speed rail, it took uh, six to five to six hours time to take the train from north to south. But these days, uh, with high-speed rail, you can complete the whole journey in 90 minutes. Wow. And why? Because uh, high-speed rail trains, they have extra power, extra energy to run faster. And we think of our maturation process like a ordinary train, but being pushed by the heat yes, yes. to go much faster forward. Mm -hmm. So by the end of the uh, process, you will reach your destination uh, 
which means in terms of whiskey, you will get everything from the wood or from oxidation process, from extraction process, from the interaction between okay. the, uh, the spirit and the wood and so on. They are all there for you to enjoy. So it's not really necessary to, right. uh, to, to, to mature our whiskey for a long, long time just for the sake of having a number on the bottle. Good point. And, so and, and, is, and actually mm, speaking of that, you mm, just released the Cavalan X. Is that, is that what it's called? The 10th uh, yes, anniversary? Yes. That's right. So uh, last year, uh, because the 4th of December on 2008, that was the time when we first launched our Cavalan Classic. Okay. So last year was the uh, the tenth year to, uh, uh, to you know to celebrate that. So Mr. Lee has decided that uh, also ten years ago, when I went with him to to uh, to France mm -hmm. to uh, to Bordeaux, uh, oh, we okay. actually went that. to see the so-called the five main chateaus uh, in that area. I'm not allowed to say the names uh, because of the. Um, um, non-disclosure yes. agreement and so on. So basically these five main uh, chateaux, mm -hmm. they, uh, they produce very good wines. Uh, at that time, we bought some wine casks from these people. Okay. Uh, so when you mature Kavlan new make mm -hmm. in, in these wine casks, uh, the, the end result is it's something that is uh, very exceptional. Y yes, absolutely. I always say that it's the combination of uh, uh, young new make uh, with the tradition of these old chateaux. chateaux. So the uh, the flavors are really complex. Well, you did a mm -hmm. Poyac and a Margot, is that correct? So or far, is... right. so far, yes. So far, oh. But we have another three in the oh, pipeline. Oh, okay. Pipeline. Yes, well, I did not know this, right. this is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so these are coming are soon to the US. They are, okay. Yes, yes, okay. Right. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I got the chance to try it in Europe, so mm -hmm. very excited for it to come to the US. Yeah, yes, but it's yes, a very limited right. run. Very so. limited, so in total, uh, 5,000 sets okay. for the whole world. Because, um, you know, once again, if you look at these uh, five special uh, producers in, in Bordeaux, they don't really release their cars mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to, you know, to the anybody. whiskey industry yeah. or to anybody. Mm -hmm. So at that time, we could only buy limited, limited numbers of these cars. Well, I think that might mm -hmm. be the most creative uh, combination mm -hmm. of, of whiskey with, with Chateau Margaux and right. Poyac. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've ever yes, seen any yes. mm -hmm. brands do that uh, too they, often. There are some distilleries doing that, but I would say that the, uh, the results are not as... Um, Satisfactory as uh, right, you right. Know, when you mature something in subtropical heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, would you say that mm -hmm. the 2015 World Whiskey of the Year mm -hmm. that was given to you guys was right. a contributing factor to the success mm -hmm. right now? Um, the 2015 uh, World Whiskey Awards yeah. uh, awarded uh, the Vino Barrick Cast Strength as uh, world's best single malt whiskey. I would say that. Um, that really made Kavlan um, famous. Yes, both here in the you know in U US, U.S. and also in Europe, and also rest rest of the world. So we, um, I think we are really lucky to uh, to have that award to be awarded to Kavlan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's actually what got me into Kavlan in terms right. of what I tasted. I think first. it really draws uh, people's attention. Well, it's a red mm -hmm. and white wine cask that yes, was that's right. you know, that's previously right. used and yeah. is finished for you guys. That's, that's spectacular. Right. That was the first time Thank I'd you. had any Thank cask you. that did red and white wine in mm -hmm. it at the same time. So yes. it's very, very good. That, that one is very special. Uh, if, if you would like to try it, uh, like, like Nate mentioned just now, um, we use both uh, red and also white wine casks for the maturation of that particular expression. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the color, it's not here, but if you look at the, the actual uh, whiskey itself, uh, the color is a bit red. So many consumers, they would think immediately that matured in red wine cask. But the thing is, uh, we can only create, we, we can also create the same effect with white wine cask. Because uh, at that time, in 2008, uh, once again, together with uh, Dr. Jim Swan, mm -hmm. uh, we developed this uh, brand new innovation of doing the so-called STR process, which means uh, you have to do shaving, toasting, and recharring. 
of the barrel to, to, to yes. the barrel yes. to the wine cask. Okay. So that uh, everything becomes uh, uh, with a uniform, uh, you know, uh, quality mm -hmm. uh, by the end of maturation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. Thank you. Um, so what we have here for mm -hmm. you guys today, I think, I yes. think is interesting because I would say that the mm -hmm. distillery select is, yeah. is you can do both mm -hmm. whiskey on its own, neat, or, or in a cocktail. That's right. That's right. Kind yeah. of interesting. You know, uh, distillery select is actually designed to be a very versatile mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. single malt whiskey. Uh, whether you like it neat or on the rocks or in cocktails uh, through the creation of these uh, arts, works of cocktails of these uh, mixologists, this one is uh, the perfect choice. I think it's interesting because I would say that Chicago, is, for me, mm. Chicago personally is the best place in the U.S. to mm -hmm. drink whiskey or to right. find whiskey. Yes, I, I, agree. I think it's, I agree. the bar scene here is, mm -hmm. is incredibly diverse, right. incredibly unique. Uh, you can go anywhere and find mm -hmm. some of the best malts mm -hmm. on, on the wall and have some of the best cocktails. I don't think any other market in the U.S. really compares right. to that. You know, you've got New York, which is great, but New York knows what it has. It knows that it's, it's got mm -hmm. the financial ability to charge mm -hmm. these exorbitant prices for certain things. And, and I think that here mm -hmm. in Chicago, you come and you, you get a drink and a very good quality mm -hmm. drink for a very reasonable price. And I think that's right. the true sign of the industry here is yes, that it's yes. such a diverse mm -hmm. place to get these types of products. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I just love it out here. And I love that this mm -hmm. is where I met Cavalan and, and right. fell in love with thank it out you. here. So, thank uh, Ian, thank you so much no, for, thank for you. this. Thank I really you, appreciate man. this. Thank, thank you, you very Cheers. much. Thank you. And thank you for coming as well. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you guys thank all you. for coming. Um, at this time, I, I'd love to open it up to you guys if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Ian Chang here. Mm -hmm. uh, in your introduction, you, you mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. Kavalan is uh, one of the most technologically advanced distillers. Can you speak uh, right. about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what, what Nate meant was uh, at Kavalan, because as you know, we are a very young distillery. This is only our 15th year uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the uh, disti distilling uh, uh, operation. So what we do is uh, we think that uh, in order to make sure that we can obtain the quality, uh, we pay a lot of attention to details uh, by using um, scientific methods. For example, when it comes to um, the molting, I mean the the milling process, which is uh, the first stage that we do at Kavlan, uh, where you use our um, mills to. Uh, to break the uh, the multi barley into uh, the fine, the coarse, and the flour, the, you know the three uh, portions. Um, we always make sure that our quality control people they they do the uh, the, the size determination uh, work on a daily basis to make sure that this is at a uh, so-called golden ratio of our uh, golden ratio, so that for the next stage of uh, mashing, we manage to extract the maximum amount of starch uh, into glucose by the natural conversion of, uh, of internal enzymes of the multi body. And this is once again achieved by using very precise temperature control uh, equipment that we have at the distillery. So that during the mashing process, uh, from the first water, <clears throat> which is always uh, 63.5 degrees Celsius, and then the second water to be 85, and the third one to be 90. And then <clears throat> followed by um, the fermentation, where we also use uh, the so-called jacketed vessel so that we can run cold water in the outside of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, in, in, the in the jacket to control the temperature during the uh, fermentation process. Because this is once again, uh, it will affect the, uh, the quality of your uh, wash, which is uh, the, the, uh, the alcoholic, which is also called beer, uh, you know, can have a very high content of alcohol, but also very fruity, very complex to nose. So these are all uh, just the, some, some, of these, uh, some of these are examples of what we do uh, to, in order to obtain quality uh, in our product by using uh, scientific method. And also when it comes to the, um, <clears throat> the final stage, we also <clears throat> use uh, GCMS <clears throat> uh, 
and also HPLC, all these are high-tech chemical analysis <coughs> to, uh, to determine whether we have the right amount of uh, wood-related flavors, the right <coughs> amount of oxidized uh, you know, uh, compounds in order to uh, contribute to your good mouthfeel and also the good uh, fragrance when you nose the whiskey. So that's, <coughs> that's what we do at Kavalan in terms of scientific methods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there uh, any plans to introduce a, a peated malt or like a heavily peated malt? Oh, <clears throat> good question. Wow. I can see that you are a connoisseur yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chicago. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> when Kavlan first started, uh, we produced 100% unpeated. But up to five years ago, uh, once again, Mr. Lee, he's uh, unpredictable. But one thing about him is that he listens to uh, consumers' uh, comments and also consumers' uh, needs. So these days, uh, we see that more and more consumers globally uh, who like peated whiskey. So that was uh, three years ago, so 2016, uh, we started to produce our peated uh, new make. So these are now uh, in the process of uh, maturation uh, in a warehouse. Hopefully by early next year, we should be able to launch our uh, very first peated um, expression of Kavlan for you to enjoy. Please mm -hmm. make sure it hits the US. Yes, yes, definitely. We'll definitely. make sure you specifically get <laughs> something. So Josh, yes, keep yes. us in touch and we'll <laughs> deliver. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really but, cool. But one thing about our peated uh, whiskey is that if you like uh, whiskeys like Arbeg or say Lafroy, these Lagavulin. are quite heavily peated. Yeah. So Kavlan's peat, uh, peated uh, single malt whiskey, I would say it is very mildly peated. So in terms of um, the so-called the uh, phenolic level, in terms of par parts per million ppm, uh, it is about five to ten ppm only. So just enough for you to notice on the nose, but when you try it on the palate. Uh, you know, that's when the, uh, all these um, peated molecules and also the fruity, Compound, right. all these uh, complexities uh, will come, you know, become alive. Uh, so something very different and also very unique as well. Mm -hmm. wow. So you guys talked about your scientific process and, yes. and how you guys have a lot of uh, quality control. Mm -hmm. And then you also paralleled the the tropical environment towards the reason why you guys mm -hmm. are doing, you know, five year, 10 year. That's right. But have you guys considered doing a temperature controlled environment in order mm -hmm. to age them in the barrels to keep the evaporation from happening? Or do you feel like the tropical environment is what really leads to the mm -hmm. distinct flavor and personality right. of the Catalan whiskey? Yes, this is a very good question. This is all about uh, finding the, uh, the so-called the optimum you know, the balance between uh, natural environment, but also uh, refrigerated or temperature controlled environment. As we know, uh, if you can lower the, uh, the, the temperature of the, uh, of the warehouse or the surrounding area where you mature your whiskey, you can actually uh, reduce the end your share, which is the evaporation, but also you can prolong the uh, maturation time but the thing is, uh, when it comes to the regulations uh, in Taiwan, we cannot really move the, uh, the unfinished product, where in, in our case, in, in the case of whiskey, our government considered whiskey, I mean, new make in the cask are considered to be unfinished. So you cannot move the, uh, the content and also the cask away from the distillery. Otherwise, Mr. Lee has actually thought about moving our casks with the new make in, oh. in, in them up in the mountains, up into the mountains, into caves, or you know, somewhere cool. But once again, the thing is, uh, he also cannot wait for the whiskey to be mature so that we can sell them, you know, sell our, our expressions. So these days, um, I'm actually working on a, a very uh, 
a, a very special, um, I would say, method or implementation that we can, uh, we, we try to reduce the angel share without prolonging the, uh, the, the time of maturation. Oh. Yeah, so at the end of the day, once again, it's all about quality. Uh, if we just want to put a number on a label to say that this is uh, 12 years old, 15 years old, or 20 years old, we will need to do a very different way of maturing our, our cask, mm -hmm. our you know, new make in a cask. That is something that we, um, we, we always you know, think about in, internally. Yes. So if we really want to, I know that uh, since we launched into the uh, global markets, uh, also in the, uh, in the sectors of duty-free and travel retail, mm -hmm. one of our very good partner, which is uh, CDF, uh, which operates the uh, duty-free uh, shops in Hong Kong airport. They always want Kavalan to come up with a 12 years old or 15 years old whiskey so that they can sell in Hong Kong airport. But uh, so far, Mr. Lee still thinks that it's not really necessary to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Also a connoisseur because uh, <laughs> you know the um, you know the uh, the balance between these two. Yeah. Actually, I did have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Have you guys considered, since you guys are, you know, considered mm -hmm. the most tech technology? Wow, I can't even say technology. <laughs> well, I work here. I promise. Yes. Um, <laughs> considered an, an advanced mm -hmm. distilling process. There we yes, go. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Have you guys considered any kind of movement-based maturing processes? I know that uh, I think it's one of the distilleries that they stated that they could be able to speed along the, mm -hmm. the, the effects of maturing by putting casts on like ships in the ocean and the movement right. of the waves. <coughs> the Jefferson mm -hmm. Ocean yeah, exactly. Agency. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. That's a good question. So we actually have uh, done something like that already for the past uh, 14 years because uh, if you uh, if you come to see us in the future to Taiwan, um, you see that uh, our our maturation warehouses uh, at the moment we have two, mm -hmm. so both of them are five story uh, tall, and uh, within the warehouse you actually have temperature differences uh, within you know between floors to floors. Mm -hmm. So when I say that hot summer between May and October each year, uh, when the outside is uh, 38 degrees Celsius. The inside can actually be as warm as 42 to 45 degrees Celsius. So that is something uh, also very hot, mm -hmm. just like Oof. in you know on a boat. If you uh, put everything in the uh, in, inside, in, yeah. Yeah, inside. Uh, so the temperature is very high in there, and that's when that's that, that's how we manage to extract you know the, the nice colors from the wood uh, into the whiskey. And also, uh, we purposely shut all the windows during our summertime so that we can uh, trap the heat in there to create the uh, so-called artificial greenhouse effect within the warehouse. So that is something that we do similar to, um, to the, uh, the product that you had mentioned just now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that's only good for color. In wintertime, we have to open all the windows to encourage the cold air coming from Siberia through Japan and then come to Taiwan, which is uh, about today here, six degrees Celsius outside. This is our super winter in Taiwan. So <laughs> this is when we uh, encourage the cold air to go into the warehouse so that uh, oxidation process will take place really nicely. Huh. Yeah, Oxidation is uh, inversely proportional to uh, temperature. So if you want good oxidation, uh, you need to keep your uh, casks cool. with the content inside yeah. in a cooler environment. Yeah. So warm summer, relatively colder uh, winter for about four to five years time. That's how we manage to uh, to wow. to get that maturity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Cool. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Please. Yeah. We go. Um, okay. So I actually want to change gears a little bit from mm -hmm. process and talk more about like the culture in Taiwan around 
um, you know, whiskey and sort of alcohol in general. This is a really interesting case since it was in the relatively recent past um, okay. that the WTO, you know, changes yeah, occurred and really too. opened up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd love to talk or hear your thoughts, I guess, mm -hmm. on how you feel the drinking culture has changed or mm -hmm. industry culture has changed over the past, you know, 15, uh, 20 years. So since we joined WTO, uh, the consumers in Taiwan drink even more. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you, you, you can have, uh, you know, open imports from around the world. Uh, before, it used to be only our government. Uh, they, they select what to import. For example, at that time, uh, I don't know, for some reason, they really liked cognac. So cognac was uh, the biggest spirit in oh. Taiwan uh, before 2002. So uh, after we joined WTO, we do see uh, a market that is more open. And uh, also consumers are able to try more different uh, varieties, whether whiskey or wines or beer and, and, and everything. So the drinking culture in Taiwan is very much um, business uh, related. For example, uh, you know, we have to entertain our clients. Uh, so when we go to uh, have business uh, dinners, uh, that's when the volume is really generated because uh, we have this culture of uh, doing ganbei, which means uh, <laughs> bottoms up in one shot. Uh, I think Nate has experienced <laughs> yes, that with, this, with yes. the owner of the distillery, Mr. Lee, yes. who um, is the ultimate drinking machine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny, when we went to Taiwan, um, we went to the um, the German beer house that yes, you yes, guys that's own. Right, right. That's right. What was it yeah. called again? It's Baskin. Yes, yes, yes. 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 That's okay, right. so mm. we went to a German beer house, and I thought this was very different for a Taiwanese whiskey mm. company to be taking us to a German beer house. But mm. sure enough, they had all of the Cavalan whiskeys on on the wall there. And mm. to speak to your point, one thing that I think that I love about the brand is that it's the only brand in the world that has their own stores. So. You go to Taiwan now, and there's Cavalan stores throughout Taiwan, whereas you go here, and there's a, a liquor store, right? So it's the liquor, uh, what we were talking about yesterday, you, you know, uh, Liquor Park or, or Binnie's. They're, they're actual liquor store names. Over there, they're Cavalan stores. And so I found that really, really interesting. That that, that was the only market. What, what was the reason for that? Oh, because, um, to be honest, initially, uh, when we launched our very first whiskey, which is this one here, back in 2008, mm -hmm. on the 4th of December, I remember very clearly, uh, we invited uh, media people and also wine and liquor shop owners. No one was interested in Kavalan because uh, they always say, they, they used to think that, uh, because mainstream, after all, is Scotch. And when it comes to scotch, it's always about 12 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, they talk about the, um, the tradition and heritage of hundreds of years. So at that time, uh, no one wants to sell Kavlan or buy Kavlan domestically. So Mr. Lee Sr., he was actually quite upset. So he decided that, okay, if you don't want to sell my products, I'll sell them myself. Wow. So he set up his own uh, stores, which is uh, throughout Taiwan. Uh, we now have uh, 100. You about, have 100, about 100 stores? Yes, from north to south. So that's, wow. you know, these I are the shops where you many. can go and experience the, uh, the complete um, flavors of Kavlan and also anything that King Car Group produces. Yeah, they're brilliant stores. They're very Thank well you. laid out. Thank and you. I think that speaks to the Taiwanese yes. culture post WTO as well, because I don't know of any other country right now that would allow a brand to have a store apart from the distillery store on the distillery itself, right? So yeah, very open culture yeah. in that respect. That's right. Yeah. Oh. So please come and see us in the future, if you can. Yeah. You know, from Chicago, you have direct flight <laughs> to, uh, to Taipei, which is uh, 13 hours. And then from the airport to our distillery is less than two hours. So in less than 20 hours, you'll be there. <laughs> yes. And if you come, uh, as I always say, I'll make sure that you drink until you drop. <laughs> as much as you want. You can even bring your container with you. I'll, I'll let you take away some. <laughs>
Uh, any no, any no, more? No. It's uh, it's all about moderate drinking. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Yes, <laughs> good advertisement for drinking responsibly at the end of this. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. This has been thank spectacular. You. Really appreciate you guys, and and Nina, thank you again thank you. for this. Thank you, Nate. It was brilliant. Time. Thank you. And uh, b before we end, before we end, I would just like to thank Google once again for, uh, for yes. having us. Thank here. you all. Really so much. appreciate Josh, you've this. done an incredible job. That's right. Been thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. And of course, I hope you guys stick around for a trial of all these yes. lovely whiskeys. Yes, please. This is some fantastic stuff. So, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you.